joined now by LPL Research Senior Market Strategist Ryan Dietrich. Hey, we always have him on the show about once a month, and good morning to you, sir. Good morning, guys. Thank you for having me back. And I'll say this. I get to come on with you guys every month. It's a lot of fun. I do other interviews. I've never seen Back in Black or ACDC <laughs> be the intro. So this is going to be a great interview. We're Thank trying you. to make finances fun again. You know, that's what that's we're trying exactly. to do. Exactly. It hasn't been that much fun in the markets all uh, that the last couple of weeks or so. certainly hasn't rivaled uh, what we saw in the last quarter of 2018 by any means, but certainly I think enough to make investors nervous. And we're going to talk a little bit about the reasons for that. But as we dive in today, Ryan, let's talk about the first quarter earnings and stay on the fundamental track here. What's your analysis mm -hmm. of the first quarter earnings that are being reported? Well, first quarter earnings, guys, are pretty much about 95% done. So we kind of know what the picture is. The bottom line, really positive in our view. Now, here's the catch. Year-over-year -year earnings are virtually flat, up just slightly if you look at the S&P 500. So someone from the outside would say, well, flat earnings, why is that good? It's all about the expectations. You know, six weeks ago, a lot of people were talking about an earnings recession, meaning two quarters of negative earnings in a row, potentially 5% drop in earnings this first quarter. Fortunately, what happened? Earnings came in once again better than expected. So at LPL Research, we're really encouraged by how earnings season was flat, even though, again, it's better than expected. And we continue to think, you know, Jeff Bookbinder is one of our market strategists on the team. He and I did our weekly podcast just yesterday, and he's our earnings guy. And Jeff really thinks the second half of this year, we can continue to see stronger than expected earnings. Um, and that can, again, be a good buffer when we have all these trade concerns. The economy still looks good, led by earnings. You mentioned trade, and since we last visited, Ryan, things have turned sour on the on mm -hmm. the trade front. We were really thinking that you know the president and and the Chinese were uh, headed toward maybe some type of an agreement, and then all of a sudden, a, a few <coughs> tweets caused everything to to kind of go south. Are you concerned right now that uh, this is going to blossom into a bigger deal for us? Well, John, you know we are starting to be concerned a little bit, but you're right. Keeping it real simple, three weeks ago. Most people, including us at LPL Research, thought we were a couple days away from having a pretty big time resolution with China and all these concerns and, and differings on trade. And now it appears both sides have really dug their heels in. Like you said, President Trump is saying they reneged. If you listen to the Chinese media, they're also saying the U.S. kind of started asking for things right at the end. What's the true story? The true story, what we know, is both sides appear to really dug their heels in. Now, that is not the end of the world. We think this trade deal is probably about 80% done. It's just a few more sticking points. Specifically, the United States wants to leave tariffs on in the very beginning. China does not want tariffs on in the beginning. And then some intellectual property things that apparently both sides aren't agreeing on. But we do think we can get a deal. Now, the big date we're all looking at, uh, the end of June is the G20 over in Japan when President Trump and President Xi will meet face to face. We believe that's the first time they'll meet face to face until then. And potentially they can ham out, ham out some type of potential path to resolution is kind of the, the lingo that we like to use. But the bottom line is this. The economy is still strong. No one wants a trade war. No one really wins in a trade war. But we've been having this going on since the first quarter of last year. And, and stocks in the U.S. economy really has held in there. There will be a breaking point. We're not naive to that. But we still think we can get some type of resolution before the end of, put it this way, school starts in August. Hopefully we can have some type of resolution by then. It's kind of how we see things at LPL Research. Well, we know investors don't like uncertainty, and that's been a large mm -hmm. part of the reaction to uh, the trade talk about a trade war, anytime you use that terminology. But let's kind of talk about what could potentially happen. Are you worried at all that a trade war would lead to higher prices and or higher inflation? Yeah, we are. Now, just yesterday, uh, Fed Chairman Powell had a speech where he talked about inflation. And he even said the Fed needs to wrap their arms around why in the world we're not having higher inflation with full employment, the potential tariffs that are going on. So the Fed doesn't understand why inflation's higher. I'm not sure any of us are going to. <laughs> the bottom line, though, when you see, there was a report that came out just yesterday. The average family of four in the United States will be impacted by about $2,300 if some of these potential tariffs that are out there are actually in, in play and, and, and take part. So when you look at things like that, we wrote about it this week in our weekly economic commentary. We did say, hey, you know, eventually you keep jack jacking up prices 10 to 25 percent, you're going to have potentially higher inflation. Who's going to impact eventually? It is going to impact that end consumer. And we think that's kind of the first round of tariffs really didn't impact the consumer for the most part. It was more the supply chain and, and, and that side of things. 
But some of these things that we see that are going to have higher tariffs coming in are going to impact the U.S. consumer and Chinese consumers. And that's when, you know, with, with elections in Washington and in China, that's when things maybe really can get closer to the finish line when people start seeing, oh, my goodness, I'm paying 25% more for that bed than I did, you know, a quarter ago. We get a lot of beds from China and mattresses. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. But we still think we can get some type of resolution. But higher inflation just makes sense with a full economy and a growing, a growing economy and a full employment picture. Then you add all these tariffs coming in. LPL Research, we think a little bit higher inflation makes a lot of sense the second half of this year. So turning to the markets and, and looking at, at what happened with the, the trade battle, it, it left some blood on the street. And, and then <laughs> we had a nice little rebound over a couple of days. And this kind of bounced around since then. Uh, you would predicted the volatility, but you're really encouraged by the fundamentals. Are you still relying on the fundamentals that we all kind of look at as we head toward the end of the year? And are you still sticking with your uh, forecast of 3,000 on the S&P? John, we sure are. We still think 3,000 is quite likely for the S&P. Now, obviously, the start of the year, after the fourth quarter, a lot of different places cut their earnings estimates, cut their estimates on the S&P 500. At LPL Research, as I came over with you guys every month, we said, you know, we still think there's a stronger economy led by earnings, and 3,000 remains our target. Now, here's the catch, right? The S&P was just up the first four months of the year, one of the best starts we've seen in decades for stocks. Now, it was after a very rough fourth quarter, but still, we bounced back and went to V-shape very, very quickly. We just looked around and said, this is a really good recovery, but up 25% from the lows, and we just had a very quick 5% correction just recently. We still think maybe there could be a little bit more of a correction. The average correction, guys, during... I think we're going to talk about sell and may go away in a second, but the worst six months of the year from May to Halloween, you see about 11% correction on average, even more during a, a pre-election year like we are. So we think maybe a little more volatility, a little more weakness. We might blame it on trade, blame it on this, blame it on that. After a 25% bounce, a little bit more of a correction can be there, but the positive is those underlying fundamentals, um, you know, near historic lows and initial claims, earnings are strong, like I said, some of the leading economic indicators we look at, how Housing starts last week are really good. Consumer confidence at 15-year highs. I mean, the economy is really driving us. And longer term, that should lead to a 3,000 S&P 500 target. But it's not going to be a straight line, and it's going to be rocky after the big bounce that we had from the uh, Christmas Eve lows. You're listening to the Get Ready for the Future show. We're speaking with LPL Research's senior market strategist, Ryan Dietrich, joins us once a month on this program. And, Ryan, let's talk about something that maybe we don't really hear about if you watch the financial press or listen to the financial news. I don't think productivity gets a lot of discussion, and you guys are always tracking that. Um, Let's first of all define that, uh, what, you, what we mean by that, and then how is it affecting the performance of companies right now, and, and maybe how is it helping the outlook for the markets? Sure. Well, productivity, just kind of like it sounds, right? Getting more work done for the same amount of time that you did. If you're more productive, you can obviously create more things for the same amount of time. And the way we look at the world based, uh, the economy, I should say, with LPL research is we think productivity is the key. The truth, guys, during this 10-year bull market that we've had since, uh, you know, the lows in 2009, stock market's done great. You could argue the economy really hasn't. We've barely printed 3% GDP. Productivity has been extremely low on this recovery. That's another one that's got the Fed and a lot of other economists scratching their head. Hey, you know, we've got, you know, we got a cell phone here. You can do anything you want on your cell phone. You'd think we'd be more productive, but the productivity numbers have been low. And why is that? Well, we don't think confidence has come in as much as it can. I mentioned 15-year highs on consumer confidence. Businesses are still a little bit leery on things after the financial crisis. The positive, though, is that if business confidence does increase, which we think it will, leads to higher productivity. Now, to keep it simple, higher productivity is a good thing. It can lead to higher wages in a good way. You can afford it without pref um, pressuring profit margins. That extends the 10-year business cycle. So productivity is the key to everything, in our opinion, to extend this business cycle. I think it was about approximately two weeks ago we had a productivity number come out, one of the best ones we've seen in five or six years. So the bottom line productivity seems to be finally creeping in, and that can increase, improve the economy, and it should lead to uh, some better things. But it's interesting, you're right. Most people talk about profits, they talk about PE multiples, you know, all the different news. Productivity is one of those things that's so important that we kind of gloss over it. Maybe for 10 years we haven't had much productivity, and that's why. But we see some light at the end of the tunnel, and productivity looks to be turning the corner, and that can extend this old business cycle, old bull market, but maybe give it you know, potentially several more years worth of life if that productivity come, creeps in like we think it can. 
So to wrap up and to to kind of encapsulate our thoughts about this at this point, Ryan, I would think that uh, to say that that the business cycle has a chance of, of continuing to be extended, but you better have uh, your boots on and your, and your saddle cinched up pretty well if, uh, if you're going to ride this one out. Would that be accurate? You're right, John. Late in business cycles, late in economic cycles, you have more volatility. Well, this one's 10 years old, so we fully expect more volatility. But again, as we said at LPL Research, bull markets don't die of old age. They die of excesses, overspending, over leverage, overconfidence. We're not seeing the same level of overs we've seen before. And with productivity so low still, honestly, looking back you know, 70 years, there's room for that to go higher. So there really is reasons to think this economic cycle can continue. And at the end of the day, we need a resolution with China sometime you know, over the next couple of months to really kick things into gear. Without that, well, it's going to be this rocky, frustrating world, and maybe we don't get to 3,000 of the S&P 500. But we still think we can get that resolution with China, and that'll kick start things to be a pretty good second half of the year. We've got about a minute left, and, and much of our show today has been concentrated on the old adage, sell in May and, and go away. What, what's your take on that? Well, we wouldn't ignore it, but sell in May, go away again. It's the worst six months of the year, April 1st to Halloween, and there is some truth to it. You know, the seasonal, you tend to get some of the big pullbacks during the summer months. Volume's light, you can get a little bigger move. So this year, with the big move that we had off those lows, we're a little more concerned. I know I came on with you guys last year saying, you know, we don't believe sell may go away this year. And the S&P went up every single month until October. This year, though, we are a little more concerned and we're a little more, slightly more defensive with things, expecting a little bit more of an equity pullback during the time of year when you tend to see it. Bottom line, though, these six months still average about 2.5%. So it doesn't mean you just go hide under your bed and buy gold and buy cash, right? We still think equities are a place to be, but there might be a better time to, for a better pitch to swing, and we think it could be later this summer when we'll kind of get a little more aggressive with equities on a well-deserved correction. Ryan Dietrich, our guest on the Get Ready for the Future show, Senior Market Strategist for LPL Research. Thank you, as always, for being with us, and we'll talk to you again in about a month or so. I can't wait. Thank you guys for having me again. We'll